Hello, hello friends. Today is the day. We're making all of our bread products for the month in one day. And as you saw, I have my coffee ready because I think I might need some caffeine to get through this. Um, I have made a whole bunch of stuff, bread products in one day before, just not this many, which I think it's gonna be totally doable. It just seems like a lot because it is a lot. <laughs> but um, in order to prepare for a whole day of baking like this, I do purchase all of my flour in bulk. I am using, it's an all-purpose flour. I've never used a bread flour. Um, so this is all-purpose organic white wheat. So that's what I am using today. So I buy this in like a 50 pound bag and then I divide it out into these smaller one gallon freezer bags. They all go into the freezer for 48 hours to make sure we're killing off any potential bugs, eggs, those sort of things. So that's what I do with my flour. I also buy my yeast in bulk. I am just using dry active yeast. This is a one pound pack and I store, like I'll buy a couple of these at a time and I'll store them in the freezer and they last for a good long while. Um, I've had them in there like a year or two and they are just fine when I pull them out. And then when I do open them, I put them right back in the freezer. That's how I make sure this stuff stays good. So we're using the dry active yeast. You're gonna need the honey, olive oil, sugar, salt. I try to make sure I'm using a good quality salt. This is Redmond's Real Salt. It still has all of the trace minerals in it. And some other things you might need. I think a few eggs and some of the recipes and maybe some brown sugar and butter. So those are all the ingredients needed for today. We are making sandwich loaf. I'm going to double that recipe so I have four loaves of bread for the month. We typically go through about a loaf a week. It just depends on how we're eating that week. I'm going to make um, one batch of dinner rolls, two batches of English muffins, two batches of bagels. Uh, I'm going to double my pizza dough and that is just going to be preparing um, the discs to put in the freezer. Um, I'm going to double my buns so I have one batch of hot dog buns and one of hamburger and then I'm going to quadruple my tortilla recipe. Um, and I will go through how I store everything to keep it fresh. Um, so we are just going to get started with our day. Uh, I think I want to try and work smarter, not harder. Um, we have to keep in mind that I only have one oven. I don't know how many ovens you have. If you have two, you are blessed. Um, but with one oven, and all of these recipes that do have some rise times. I don't wanna to have too many rising and then not enough space in the oven because then I'm gonna deal with some overproofing and then things will fall flat. If you ever have a recipe fall flat, it's because it's been overproofed. So we don't wanna do that. So I'm trying to use my time wisely and not do too much at once, but at the same time, not be waiting around wasting time while something is rising. So we're gonna work that out as we go. So let's just get started. So fair warning, my kids just woke up and we may not have a whole lot of peace. So sorry if there's a ton of background noise. I am just opening up 
my um, dry yeast here and I'm just putting it in a freezer bag. Um, I've spilled an entire one of these before, so when you open it, put it inside something bigger. Um, I wanted to say, for convenience, if you have access to a printer, it's really nice to have all of your recipes printed out, especially if you're someone like me that uses your phone a lot. For recipes, um, it's kind of a pain in the butt to have to keep going back and forth through recipes. So I like to print them out for big baking days like this. So the first thing we're gonna do, I'm going to start on the loaves of bread because it has the longest rise time and I'm making two batches. My KitchenAid here will only um, tolerate one batch at a time. It's getting old in age and it's just not going to handle a double batch in there. So I wanna get those two started. So the first thing is two and three quarter cup of warm water. You do not want to use hot water. You're gonna kill your yeast. So you only want it just warm to the touch. You should be able to put your fingers in there and just have it feel warm. You also don't wanna use cold water because then it may not activate. So just a nice warm water. Okay, after the water, we need one and a half tablespoons of the yeast. And we're gonna put in one tablespoon of sugar. I'm just using raw cane sugar. And we're gonna let this sit for five minutes. And during that five minutes, it's just time for that yeast to start getting bubbly. And it's a great way to check and make sure that your yeast is active and it's not dead. Um, because it, it's a really sad day when um, you get your whole recipe prepared, all the ingredients are in it, and you find out your yeast um, wasn't good. So I'm just gonna mix that up. We're gonna wait five minutes and make sure it's bubbly, and then we'll continue on with the recipe. There you go, it's nice and bubbly. So we know it's active. We're gonna move on with the recipe. To our yeast mixture, we are adding two and a half teaspoons of salt, a quarter cup of oil. I am using olive oil. I know this is not the proper measuring device, but it works and a quarter cup of honey. Then it's time for the flour. This recipe calls for five to six cups of flour. I like to reserve that last cup and just add it slowly just to see if it really needs it. I don't wanna to add too much and have my bread loaf come out dry. So I just add it a little by little until the dough starts to come together nicely. Then you're gonna to wanna to let it knead for about eight minutes, either in the mixer or by hand. Now I have both batches of my sandwich loaf made. So they're gonna go into this bowl here and I'm going to allow them to rise for about an hour. It just kinda of depends on how warm it is in your home. Um, but about an hour should do the trick. Um, this dough is kind of sticky, as you can see. Um, it shouldn't be overly sticky, but don't feel like you need to keep adding flour. You're just gonna have um, dry loaf of bread then if you add too much. So it is gonna be on the sticky side. So we're gonna cover this and it is going to sit and rise until about doubled for an hour. Okay, so next up, while the bread is rising, so it needs one hour for its first rise and then another hour for its second rise. So two hours total there. I'm thinking I can get these dinner rolls done completely in that amount of time. They need a 30 minute rise, a shaping, and then a 20 minute rise, and then they're baked in like 15 to 20 minutes. So these should be able to get done before the bread loaves occupy the entire oven. So we're gonna start with, this is one cup of milk and a stick of butter, so a half a cup of butter. And this is just uh, warmed. Remember, not hot, we don't wanna kill our yeast. So that's going in here. And I just made a mess, but oh well. Um, that's going in and we're gonna add our yeast. So we need two and a quarter teaspoon of yeast. To that, we're gonna add a quarter cup of sugar and mix it all up. So we're gonna mix that up and we're gonna allow our yeast to activate before we add in our other ingredients. Something I'm trying to get better at is cleaning up as I go. I tend to be like a super messy cook, baker, whatever. Um, and then I'm left with like a massive disaster at the end of the day that has to be dealt with. So trying to clean up as I go so I'm not overwhelmed 
when I'm finished. Now that the yeast has been activated, we're gonna add in two eggs, a half a teaspoon of salt. Mix it all up and make sure everything's nice and dissolved. And then we're gonna add in our flour. This recipe calls for four cups. This dough was a bit dense and too much for my mixer to handle, so I just hand kneaded for about eight minutes. Your dough should be nice and smooth, and it like has a bit of spring to it. Do you see how it's kind of puffing back up there after I pushed it down? It should have some life to it. Then you know you've kneaded long enough. Okay. So I've got my dinner roll dough ball in here. I'm gonna cover that, and this is going to rise for about 30 minutes. We still have 30 minutes left on the loaves of bread before I can take them out, divide them all up, shape them, and let them rise in their pans. So we've got some downtime. I don't wanna do anything else that's going to require oven time because we're gonna run out of space really fast. So I think I'm gonna do the tortillas. I'm gonna mix up that dough, start rolling it out, and we're gonna cook that on the stove top. So we're gonna make uh, the best use of our time right now while we're waiting for everything else. Okay, so for the tortillas, we need nine cups of flour. So I'm gonna throw that in my bowl here. All right, so the nine cups of flour is going to give me enough for three batches of, of the tortillas. You wanna sit? We're not gonna sit on there right now. So that is roughly about 36 tortillas, give or take. Each batch will give you around 12. So we got our flour. I'm gonna add in six, I believe, teaspoons of salt and three, shh, you're too loud, three uh, tablespoons of baking powder. Mix up my dry ingredients and then I will put in my wet ingredients and we're gonna get all mixed up, right? Yeah. Yeah. What is it? No. He thinks it's snow. It's flour. We're gonna make tortillas. Okay? All right. So I got my flour. Oh, we're gonna use the excavator. Oh, okay. Bah. Bah. Is it a backhoe? Sorry, my yeah. apologies. Okay, so for each batch, we need a half a cup of butter. So we're using a cup and a half of butter in this. So I'm gonna put that in here. Whoa, okay. This is gonna get real messy real fast. Yeah, this is butter. It's gonna be messy. No. It's not snow. No, it's, it's... No. Oh boy, okay, mommy's gonna push it back for a little bit. And then we've got three cups of warm water. Okay, and we gotta mix water. Yeah. yeah! Yeah, we gotta mix it all up. All right, so we're gonna get this all mixed up into a nice dough ball. I'm gonna cover it and let it rest for about 10 to 15 minutes. That's our dough. Okay, now that our dough has rested, I am gonna portion it out into, uh, woo. Hey! <laughs> yeah, it's heavy into 36 balls, and I'm gonna let them rest for another 10 minutes. Make sure to cover these as they rest so they don't dry out. While I wait on the tortilla dough, I am going to get both of my skillets heating up and ready. I'm using two just to speed up the process a bit more. Our dinner rolls are ready to be shaped, so I am just going ahead and making them into nice little dough balls and lining them in my 9 by 13 greased pan. This is going to get covered and it is going to rise again for about 15 to 20 minutes. How many do you have? Oh, You have four? I think you got a lot more than four. Oh, How many? Two. Two? Is that a big one? Ah! All right, my little guy is already flattening out all of the tortillas, but um, you can see the bread dough here is definitely ready. 
So I am going to. No, no. What's the problem? No, no. Oh, okay. I'm going to get this out of here and get the loaves shaved and into their pans. Okay, so I'm using two different types of loaf pans today. This one is a Pullman loaf pan, and because of the way it is shaped in this lid, it's gonna give you like that store-bought square edged loaf. Um, and I like this one for my kids because the slices are just, they're smaller compared to one of these just traditional loaf pans. And that's just my own preference. But when using one of these Pullman pans, depending on its size, you're gonna need more dough than you would in uh, one of those traditional loaf pans. So for this size, I need 1100 grams of dough. So I'm going to weigh that out and get that in here. I'm gonna grease this up, grease my other loaf pans up, and then whatever dough I have remaining, I will just divide it into the traditional loaf pans. Okay, all the loaves are ready for their second rise. It's gonna take about an hour. You want the dough to be right at the top of the pans. The tortilla dough is ready. I am using a tortilla press here. This is totally not necessary, although it does help to move the process along a bit faster and you do get a nicer, more uniform circle. But um, there is a little bit of a learning curve with it. You have to make sure your dough is just the right consistency or else it just kind of springs back on itself. It needs to be like a good Play-Doh consistency. So you want to maybe let it rest a bit longer or maybe knead it a bit more if it's not doing that for you. So these just fry up on each side for about 30 seconds. As soon as you see the bubbles, you flip them. I did roll one out here by hand because I wanted you to see you should really make it almost transparent. It needs to be super thin. They do rise a bit when they are cooking. I like to have a plate nearby as soon as each tortilla is finished, throw them on the plate and I keep either a damp towel or a damp paper towel over top of them. That just keeps them soft. Our rolls have been rising for 15 minutes, so they're ready to get in the oven. Here they are all finished. With all of my bread making, I like to always brush them with butter. I just think it makes a huge difference in the flavor and it gives them like that nice sheen. So you won't ever find me not putting butter on top. Okay, all of our bread has risen. I like to have it come right to the tops of the pans. They will continue to rise in the oven as they bake. And here you can see the Pullman pan. That's all the way up to the top as well. I'm not gonna open that too far because I don't wanna mess it up. But I'm gonna get these in and then we're gonna start working on something else. Okay, so my little helper was quite the messy one. So I'm just cleaning a spot to work at and then I am going to start on the bagels. I'm gonna make a double batch of bagels and I'm also gonna get the pizza dough going. That is just gonna be making the dough, allowing it to rise and then just shaping it into discs and throwing that in the freezer. So that's a really simple one, um, but we're making good time. So far I have three recipes completed. It's 11 o'clock in the morning. I started at eight um, and I do have two little children who provide a lot of distractions and interruptions. So if you don't have that, you uh, maybe could have made a little bit better time. But I am pleased with that. So I'm just gonna keep on working. Just to reiterate, everything is better with butter. Okay, same drill. We're gonna mix up our hot water with a little bit of sugar and our yeast and allow it to get active. While we are waiting on that, I'm gonna get started on the pizza dough. So I've got my water and I am adding in some sugar right now. And then I'm gonna add in my yeast. For this, I am actually using instant yeast. I had a couple packets on hand. This way I don't have to wait until it activates. We can just keep moving on with this recipe. So I'm adding in some olive oil and all of my flour. 
I'm gonna mix that all together and then turn the pizza dough out onto the table and knead it by hand for about eight minutes before covering that and letting it rise for an hour. Moving back to the loaves of bread, I wait about five minutes before turning them out of their pans and just letting them rest on the cooling rack. If you let them in the pans too long, they develop some condensation and start to get soggy, so you wanna get them out of the pans. The Pullman pan required a bit more baking time than the other loaves, and I also removed the lid for the last five minutes to get the top golden brown. Moving back to the bagels, I am adding in my olive oil, along with some brown sugar, and salt, stirring to combine before adding in my flour. We are kneading yet again for eight minutes. I most definitely count this as exercise. You really do get a nice arm workout in. So we're just going to cover this and it is going to rise for another hour. While we wait on our bagels, I'm gonna get started on the hamburger and hot dog buns. So I have warm milk and our yeast, along with some sugar. Now, just as a reminder, all of the exact measurements and recipes can be found in the description below. Now we're gonna add in some melted butter, our eggs, salt, and then finally our flour. And then you guessed it, we are stirring, kneading, and allowing it to rise. There is nothing difficult about any of these recipes. They're all so similar, and if you can do one, you can do them all. Don't let them intimidate you. Our bagel dough is ready, so I am going to divide this out into 16 equal portions. I did make a double batch here. And if you'd like to be precise, by all means, use a kitchen scale. Before I actually get to shaping the bagels, I'm gonna get some water boiling on the stove with some honey. Sorry about my camera, I didn't really know what to focus on here. So to shape the bagels, I am just kind of tucking and pinching the dough underneath to create like a nice, taut, smooth surface for the bagel. Taking a little bit of flour on my finger and just punching a hole in it, and then I am just stretching that out. And that's it. You just repeat with all of your bagels. Place them on a parchment lined sheet. And then you're going to place each bagel into the boiling water and allow each side to boil for about 45 seconds. This is going to give you that signature, like chewy outer skin layer of a bagel. Just gonna keep repeating this until all of your bagels have been boiled. And it helps to have either some sort of slotted spoon or like a mesh strainer to get all of that water out. Next comes the egg wash and you can choose whatever toppings you'd like to apply. I used an everything seasoning mix along with some poppy seeds, some shredded cheese, and then I kept some plain. Okay, the pizza dough has doubled in size. So all I'm gonna do to this, I'm going to divide it into four equal portions. I'm gonna just shape them into like a nice little disc and wrap them in saran wrap, probably put all of them together in a freezer bag and they're just gonna go right into the freezer. 
for future use, all you have to do is pull out one of these dough discs from the freezer and allow it to thaw in the fridge for about 12 hours. And then you want to let it sit at room temperature before shaping it and adding your toppings. Moving right along, our buns are now ready to be shaped. So I'm dividing this out and I'm gonna do half in hamburger buns and half in hot dog buns. So when shaping these, you want to make sure that you make them wide enough and long enough. They're going to rise considerably. So they're going to go up, but they're not gonna go outwards. So make sure that they are wide enough for a hamburger patty or long enough for a hot dog. Okay, we're waiting on those rolls to rise, but we are on our last recipe today, and it's only 2.30. I'm super stoked about that. So I am making the English muffins now, and I'm doubling it, so I need two and a half cups of water, two tablespoons of sugar, and then we need two teaspoons. Now this calls for instant dry yeast. Um, you can use active dry yeast. You're just gonna have to wait a little bit longer for it to rise. So I do have a little bit of instant yeast here I'm just going to use. All right, so now we're gonna add four tablespoons of melted butter, add two teaspoons of salt, and five and a half cups of flour. So I'm gonna get that all mixed up and then it's gonna rise for an hour. Our rolls are ready to go in the oven and here you can see just how much they did rise and they're going to rise even more in the oven. As you can see, I tried to keep things clean and it's not terrible, but I have a little bit of cleaning up to do. So I'm gonna work on this while the English muffins are rising and the buns are baking. And then I'll have a nice space to show you all how I store these things to keep them fresh. So let's talk how I store these things and how I keep them fresh. I wish I had a better method to share with you all. I really just only use some cling wrap and freezer bags. I am not a fan of plastic. I would love to find an alternative. I just haven't yet, at least one that's not affordable. So everything just kind of gets portioned out into meals, like what we could eat either for a meal or within a week. The bread will get sliced up, portioned out into bags. Everything just gets wrapped in saran wrap and then put in the bags. So that's really all I do to keep it fresh. And then as a matter of storing, if we are not going to consume something within a week, it gets put straight into the freezer. And I will keep it in the freezer about three months, anything more than that, and it starts to take on flavors and it gets funky. So I try to use it up within three months and sorry, we're playing with Legos over there. Um, if we are actively eating from something, then it gets stored in the fridge. That's where it stays freshest. You can by all means keep it on the counter, but remember we're working with homemade bread. It's not going to compare to how long a store-bought loaf stays fresh. Within a few days, you're gonna have like really dry, maybe even moldy bread. So I wouldn't keep it on the counter for more than like three days personally. So if we're eating it within the week, it goes in the fridge. Anything more long-term, it just gets stored in the freezer. I wanted to show you these tortillas are super soft and bendy. They're not going to crack and break. They're really delicious. All right, friends, we are on the last recipe. So for the English muffins, you just divide them into equal portions. And then I just kind of shape them into small discs and then place them on a parchment sheet that I had dusted with cornmeal. 
And then you want to dust the tops of them as well and then you just pat them down. You do let them rise for about 15 minutes covered. And then you want to heat a skillet over low heat. And then you are going to cover and cook these for about nine minutes. You want them on low heat. Don't have it too high, they're just going to burn. After that time, you take the cover off and you flip them very carefully. And I say very carefully because if you deflate them, you're not going to get those nooks and crannies. And to be completely transparent, this recipe um, has been hit or miss for me. Sometimes I get those beautiful nooks and crannies, and this time I didn't really get that many, and I will show you here. Regardless of the nooks and crannies situation, they were still so good. I wanted to show you how easy this sandwich loaf slices. You can get beautiful thin slices without any tearing. This recipe was given to me at my bridal shower about eight years ago, and I just can't stray from it. I always come back to it. I've tried many and they just don't compare. It is so fluffy and soft and absolutely delicious. I hope you all try it and I hope you love it as much as we do. All right, here is the final reveal. All of our bread products for the month made in one day. And I calculate without all of the interruptions and snuggle sessions and play sessions and making breakfast, lunch, and dinner, it was about six hours worth of time. So not a huge investment. And I guarantee you, most of this will last us longer than a month. There's no way our family of four could eat all of this bread in a month's time. So you can just take these recipes, adjust to your family's needs, and by all means, you don't have to do all this in one day. I will say it was very nice to get it all out of the way and only have one big mess to clean up. But if you work outside of the home and maybe you only have evenings to devote to something like this, you can split it between two or three evenings or even a few days over the course of a week. I know we are trading convenience. You're like, why? <laughs> why would I want to spend all this time doing this instead of just going and buying it? And there's quite a few reasons. Number one, you get to control your ingredients and control the quality of your ingredients. You're putting good things into your family's bodies and you're saving a lot of money. I am gonna estimate, I think I used about 20 pounds of flour. And I'm thinking for all of this bread, it cost me around 20 to $25. There's no way you could go and get this quality of bread at the store for that amount of money. And while, yes, it did take a bit of time, you know, I also had time making memories with my kids in the kitchen and there were some learning experiences for them as well. Bread making is a great skill to learn in some capacity. You don't have to do this much. I hope this video encourages you that it is simple and it can be done and it gives you the confidence to just start. And by just stocking up on some flour and some yeast and salt in your pantry, look at all of the things that you can make for your family. And don't be fooled, there are seasons of life that I buy all of my bread from the store. Now comes the real challenge, <laughs> fitting all of this in here. I like to put some things in and let them freeze before I start stacking so they don't get smushed. And just so you know, it only took up about one shelf in my upright freezer. So I hope wherever you are in your bread making journey, you found this encouraging and helpful. Please don't be afraid to ask any questions down in the comments. 
As always, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I hope you have a blessed day. Take care and I'll see you next time.